I feel like I have to like have the uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves music. Dun 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 dun. That's the Superman or something there. Okay. Hey Kickstarter, Aaron here. It's good to see you. I'd like to introduce Jesse, one of our backers. Hey. Cameron here. Also good to see you. I'd like to introduce Mac, a friend uh -huh. of ours who uh, was on Internet at Fantasy Flight Games. Be my first time playing this game. I'm super excited. Thanks for letting me in. Sweet. So what are we doing here? So, as you mentioned, these two haven't played the game yet, and we're going to run them through Sherwood's Legacy so you can see what the game looks like. This is exciting. All right, let's set up the board, and we'll give it a shot. Here we go. How's that song go? I love that song. Wait. Oh, it goes. We got. We got. We got. We got to play Brian Adams. I think I have that. Most of the rules you, we can explain as we go, but what you need to know going into this is how to win and how to lose. So to win the game, we need to survive ten rounds and defeat the sheriff. To lose, half of our villagers can be killed, half of our buildings burned down, or half of our heroes killed. Cameron, do you want to go ahead and take the first game, uh, first turn? Yeah, absolutely. If you can move me ahead and right. flip up the first tile, let's see what we got here. We've got a forest tile. All right. I know exactly how I want to place that. Awesome. Now, why are you placing it like this? Because um, I want to be putting that stone camp further towards the village so that it's more work for the enemies to get to it in case we're desperate enough to need that. And I'll enter the tile here instead so that I've got the rest of my movement to play with. Now, you have four movement to play with and three actions this turn. Yeah. I'll open up this tile. Oh, peril. So I can't place it like this because I'm entering from this square now. It was nebulous from the spawn point because it counts as all one square. So I can either do it like this to make the enemies curve around more, or like this, but either way they're going to hit that peril. So I'm going to leave the back end open so that we can move between lanes easier. And already our map doesn't line up. This will be so much nicer with proper tiles. Alright, now, it's risky, but, you know. Who likes a coward? I want to place a villager there to collect stone. Interesting. <clears throat> That's awfully risky. It's like game risky. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> it's okay. We just, I just need one of you guys <laughs> to collect that for me. I make no promises. All right, well, I guess I'll do a similar thing. I'll explore here. All right, so if we flip up this time. So I believe that's a peril as well as a stone? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll put the stone close to me, but I'm not entirely sure that's a good idea. So if we put the, the stone further back from the spawn, we're going to have more access to it because we don't have to worry quite as much about enemies jumping on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Controversially, with the peril there, I guess, I guess either way they're going to go down. Basically, we'll want to make sure that whatever side the peril's on is the less useful path overall <laughs> for the enemies so that they will try and avoid it naturally. So what would you recommend at this point? Um, I'd probably rotate it just 90 degrees this way. Yeah, that's a bugger of a tile. Because if, if we can, if you explore down this path, because you can move through resource camps, but you mm -hmm. can't move through the forest, you, uh, try and get a fairly straight path here, or put, or put something blocking here, because then enemies with their natural movement will want to go on this side of those trees. Now, can I move through a peril, or will something happen? Oh yeah, you can move through peril, no problem. It's only, when, it's only when they go through the peril, the sheriff's men. Yeah. If they travel through the peril, you get to draw, uh, roll the dice and see what happens. And something fun happens. Oh, uh, yeah. Useful. Yeah. So that's my first movement. So I'll continue exploring to here. All right. We flip up a new tile. You place that over here. <laughs> I think I'm going to call it. You are the man of peril. Awesome. So looking at how you've placed these, I'm tempted to put a barricade on this peril as soon as possible so we can direct the enemies away from both of those. Mm -hmm. Since they're both equally short distances. Now, I can't place a villager on the camp I just stood on because there would be too many people in the square, correct? That's correct. Right. So, um, and there's nothing collect you could... the one I had there so that he's out of harm's way and we have our very first resource. There's no distance for collection? No, you just can't collect the same villager you place. Gotcha, so then for one action I'll collect, so I'm assuming I just take the stone. So I take the yep. villager as well. Take the villager so, he as well. Right, so he goes back to the, uh, the inn with the resources name. We just throw everything in. Okay, the, in the and then I'll place a villager here as well. <coughs> Fantastic. And a stone gets placed on the tile immediately. And I think that's my turn. There we go. Okay. All right, I see you're up. All right, well, let's explore. This is my character. Yeah, so you just basically just flip over the tile at this point. All right. 
No, I'm noticing that there's tiles open here. That's fine. Monsters are allowed to, to spawn yeah, tiles. The sheriff's men can explore that for exactly. us. What's the worst that could happen? Everything. So I think. <laughs> yeah, you'll see. Place it like this. That makes no sense. That's actually not too yeah, bad. That's really good. So, so the four, the two forest pieces will actually block that. Uh, like except that. for archers. Now. Can I explore in this direction, or is that absolutely not you could? Forest? Yeah, at this point, if you move there, because you've moved um, one, two, three, four, you're out of movement. But you okay. could theoretically, because when you leave this, when you leave the uh, the, end, the forest entry, you choose the lane you're going down. Whereas when you're already on a tile and you flip a tile, you have to choose. If you're in this lane here and you're going to explore this tile, okay. you have to place yeah. on this lane. You can't be like, oh, and then walk over here. You have to actually continue your movement. Yeah. So in this case, um, you choose this one. So then you can go one, two, three. If you wanted to make your fourth movement to explore this tile, you could. Okay, otherwise you'd go four and then your turn would be done. So yeah. Would you say it's best to explore the map as quickly as possible versus just walking and slowly and collecting? One of the benefits to exploring as quick as possible is it gets more resource camps out and available mm -hmm. so you know what you're working with before enemies start traipsing through. Fair enough. Yeah, because they'll get to come through. And even though you'll get to place how you want when they're coming through, uh, it's still, uh, you know, beneficial for you to see what you have to play with in this game. When an enemy explores a tile, how do you determine how the tile is placed? The players still get to choose, but you will try and, like, the enemies will be wanting to go down the fastest path straight to the village. But we do get to choose the orientation of the tile when they explore. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, and anytime you're placing tiles, you have to make sure that, if at all possible, it never completely blocks off one of its neighboring tiles. Gotcha. So at this point, these two resources are for which? Because we, so far we've just seen the stone. Right? This one's for wood. Yep. Okay. That one is for metal. Okay. Stone, stone, and I believe Ivanhoe is standing on another wood one. Right. So there's a, there's just a healthy mix of each. You will always get the resources you need in any any of your tile layouts. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you'll have a game that has certain resources that are more sparse than others, but that's just the layout of the game. Each game will be challenging. It will help you dictate the changes uh, and how you're going to play the game. Uh, which changes up the flow of the game. One game might be stone heavy, so you'll be building structures like crazy. Another game might be wood heavy, so you'll be shooting archers out of towers a lot. It changes up the, the style of play. So you spend all your movement, but you've still got three actions to play with. Right. So a maximum of one can be used to place a villager, one can be used to remove a villager. First turn of the game, you're probably not going to use your third action because we've got no enemies to deal with, uh, nothing to build. So I guess naturally, you would collect. Yeah, you don't want to leave him in the open like that. Odds are he's going to die. And Remember, three of these guys die, we're done. I will right. go ahead and actually go on the metal. All right. Yeah. We'll just work our way down the line. Yeah. We'll so just sample each resource as we go. Because no, we've been quick about collecting resources, we've actually got two stone to play with. So if you did want to use your third action, you could go ahead and place a barricade like we were talking about. Oh. For now, we've got these little wooden tokens here. They'll actually be uh, nice little tokens in the punch board when they come out. Okay. Uh, you'll be able to see that on the actual Kickstarter page, but... Yeah, we've got so for now we're using up. these little wooden things we've had manufactured that we constantly reuse. They were uh, they were monster tokens in Melvin's Legacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so in that case, um, what would be would, would placing a barricade here be considered a pretty good one to kind of funnel them towards other perils? Or a barricade we don't want there to touch perils would wind up yeah oh. shoving them all down this lane and they'd be right in line to hit both of those perils. So whenever they cross a peril tile, we're gonna roll a die and something bad is gonna happen. Bad for them or bad for us? Bad for us. Okay. Oh, yeah. like, things yeah, like some that. of the yeah. getting extra movement or spawning more enemies next turn. Ah, so keep them away from the perils yeah. if you can. Perils yeah. are their their way of uh, it's it's their random mitigator to uh, allowing us to do a calculation in our heads to see how how we can play the game out and fight them. But then when they run over perils, they change the math for us so that we have to think on the fly. So ah. without it turning into a random dice game, it's yeah. actually a. Oh, okay, so now they're... they're and running. if we are especially clever, we can avoid as many perils as possible. But I don't think we've ever played a game where we can have gotten zero perils. No, no. But there's always something that we didn't see. Especially when it gets heavier, so... Would you say it's worth then trying to cluster perils together so you can try and guard them? That's actually not a bad tactic. It all depends on the layout. I mean, I've seen games where there's been no perils in row one, but then I've seen games where there's nothing but perils <laughs> in row one. Row one is the hardest to take care of. This is the row and these are the lanes. Row one is the hardest to take care of because they spawn and then they come out. And so it's just, oh God, right? But first turn monsters spawn, they don't move. You'll see them all spawned here, but they don't actually move onto the board. It's kind of like a little bit of a grace period to let us continue to explore yeah. and get to the village. Makes Robin sense. and his allies need to get to the village. You know, they're, they're running. They get We're a little stuff. bit ahead of the troops. <laughs> they were like, oh no. <laughs> so in this case, since we have the barricade, 
barricade resources, would it be a good idea to actually go ahead and put a barricade on this one? Can we physically do that? Yeah, we could do that. You've got the resources for it. You could put it on there. We you don't can't have put to... it on the peril directly. The other Correct. option is, is you might want to wait to see what spawns and do it next turn. The reason why is because when they spawn, they don't actually move on. If you put a barricade here, yes. and then let's say knights spawned here, knights crush barricades. So it might have a little bit of a waste of a place. Uh -huh. But because they don't move, if no knights spawned here, there's a better chance the knights won't spawn there and the barricade will be safe. So yeah. that may be accumulated <coughs> until we see what we're up against. Maybe. This is the best part about this, is we don't really know what's coming, right? We have no idea what's going to spawn. So it could pay off to do it, but... It could pay off to do it. It also could be a waste of a resource, but it holds them back for one round. Like, they, they yeah. will have to spend right. some of their movement to crush the barricade, which will be... I mean, there's no downside to building any structures in this game. They will all do something that will help you. Yes. All right. Well, for the sake of argument, I'll go ahead and use... Perfect. That to so we'll take these two stones, put them back into the, uh, the world pot here. All right. And you put a little barricade there. So anything that's, um, so the benefit of building this is that you block this section off, so anything that would come down here now will come down this lane here. Yeah. Okay, so that's, I think that's it. You've taken a villager, you've placed a villager, you built a barricade. That's three of your actions. You yep. moved four. It is now Ma Marion's turn. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving into the board. What'd you get? Stone? Oh, it's a good Ooh, tile stone. to have. Just... It is. It's nice to have that in the back row. So one way or another, I'm going to have to place one of these resources out of the front row. Mm -hmm. We've got two stone closer to us already. We do have a wood in the back row, though. Oh, yes, we do. I forgot about that. Now, just because it's close to the spawn, it doesn't do anything negative. It just makes it risky to put a person there because they'll die, correct? Exactly. Oh, yeah. They'll almost immediately. Almost anything on the first row is going to get taken out. There's no way to avoid... Uh, like, almost everything can attack them. In this situation here, there's some woods that will protect. But uh, if an archer comes up, the archers can shoot through the woods anyway, so... Yeah. I'm assuming not, but can I move on to the spawn if I chose to? <coughs> no. Okay. No. So, because of how this is placed out, I can't enter in the centered square, but I can enter from here, and then flip up a new tile. That's the benefit of, of choosing. Now, if he had to if he had to go down the center ooh, lane, like in I this like case... I like the look of that from over here. That's a nice one. He wouldn't be a... Ooh, that's a great yeah. one. Wow. That is the lane you want to protect, I guess. Yeah, there yeah. we go. So that that's that's a great. Struck well. gold, gents. Well, stone and wood. <laughs> the gold, Close is, the gold is here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's four movement for Marion. And what are you gonna do? In this case, I'm going to place a villager over here because it's pretty safe. I know wood is going to be important. We and actually don't have to take this villager off because that's exactly what I was. Unless say. there's archers, which they won't be able to shoot. Oh, they can't off the store. Right. Unless so an archer. Why on. wouldn't you take it off though? So the reason to leave this villager here is because every turn after the enemies have all done their thing, we're going to accrue a new resource on every space that contains a villager. Oh, so mm -hmm. it will stack over time. Yeah, up to a maximum of three. Right. Okay. So that's uh, that. That is our first full set of movements. Do you have any other actions you want to use? Uh, not really. I don't think we we don't have the resources to build anything. There's nothing for me to attack. So that'll be the end of my first turn. Cool. So that brings us right into the enemy phase. Now in the final of the game, we're going to have custom dice made. Uh, they'll be very similar in quality to the Albion's Legacy dice, and uh, they're explained in more detail on the Kickstarter page and in the rules PDF. You'll be able to see, uh, there's a graphic we've got up on the front page there, you'll have a chance to see what they look like. Plus, if you have a chance, go through the Albion's Legacy Kickstarter, uh, you'll see samples of the graphics and the symbols we're going to use. Uh, very similar to these, except green. Oh, I'm just bowling for villagers. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice. Okay, so. So on the D6s we've got here, uh, ones and twos are going to spawn foot soldiers, threes and spawn fours will spawn bowmen, uh, fives will spawn knights, and sixes will spawn witches. We're going to roll the dice again to determine quantity. On a five or six, we'll spawn two of the enemy. Anything else will only spawn one. Now, witches are only going to spawn as one, no matter what we roll. So, for the first turn, we get... Bowmen on our odd tiles and foot soldiers on our even tiles. Nice. That's now, a good, good spread. To determine quantities, it looks like we're just going to have singles of each. Alright, so Bowmen's on the odds. There you go. There's a Bowman for you. Thank you. And foot soldiers on the evens. There you go. Sweet. Nice and light for our first that's a nice. That's a nice list. So they're just kind of taunting us. They just entered the woods. They're... They're coming to get us, but they can't do much. In this case, we're great. That was a good idea building the barricade, because now he's not going to come down that lane. Uh, he's going to go after this villager, and he's going to have to go around the woods, and that's going to keep that villager alive a little longer. Awesome. Because bowmen are unique in that they're the only enemy type that hunts down villagers instead of the village itself. Mm -hmm. Very cool. 
Okay, so we've rolled for our enemies, we've rolled for the placement. They would normally move at this point, but they're not moving because this is the first turn benefit. So the next thing to do would be to place resources. The end of the turn manufacturing section. I, I guess we'll have a, a more technical term for it, the rule book in the end. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's no other villagers to place on. Perfect. And then we light a flame of hope. So we'll have custom flame of hope tokens. You can see these graphics again on the Kickstarter page. You take any one of these uh, torch towers and you light it up on fire. That means now that the fire's been lit and that the flames of hope are slowly but surely lighting up this village to success against the, the, the sheriff. So it's kind of the reverse. That's good. Yeah, actually, <laughs> perfect observations, like Negaverse Albion's. That's what I we're love it. So in oh, Albion's oh, legacy, the, the flames of hope are being extinguished, and we're trying to, to defeat the evil before the darkness ensues. And this one here, we are trying to break out of the darkness and light the flames of hope to show, show oh, the sheriff. So rather, being, rather than watching the light fade, you're watching the we're light We're building the light up by holding them off long enough to say we win, right? So, Fantastic. Yeah. Reverse Albions. Every game will have to find a way to get those Flames of Hope and all those legacies. So I've had some questions about the Flames of Hope in the comments. People Perfect. were curious if they had any effects outside of just marking the turns. All they do is mark the turns until the Sheriff arrives, and then we defeat him to win the game. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. We have to survive the Sheriff's men this long, slash 10, in order to fight the Sheriff. So the Sheriff the, gets a little angry after a while. With the enemy phase and the collection phase completed, we're back to the heroic phase. So we can go yeah. ahead and let Robin take his next turn. Robin. So... The best choice, I think, will be to explore more of this back row to see what other resources we can turn up. Two, three. So I'll go three and then explore this tile here. There you go. Okay. Now, you can actually do damage to okay. the guys that, the guys that are in queue, mm -hmm. uh, but you, have, you need to have a ranged weapon to do so. So you can't actually step on to be adjacent. No, since so, you can't go back on, you can't. While I would love to place it like this to put those trees in the way of the wood camp, I can't because I'm entering for that tile. Ah. So the best I can do is to place it here to but, keep it close to the village. That's still not too bad because there's a wood camp there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Which, actually, we've got wood collecting over there. I'm actually going to put a guy here Get some coins. and start collecting yeah. coins. Coins are a great resource. They're, they're still a resource, but they're a little different than the way the other three function. And there's some spending mechanisms at the bottom of, the, of your character sheet. And there are only the two locations where you can? Is that there's correct? Actually, yeah. only the there's only one. one. Oh, this, sorry. This, yeah is our barracks, where we get, uh, when you build arrows, you can choose to place arrows in here, ah. and those are the arrows that villagers will use if you put villagers in towers. Fair enough. Because they have to have their own supply, and their supply is four max okay. per tower. There's two towers. There, there will be a second one built, and we'll have two four max arrow um, barracks to be able to shoot from, and a character who can use arrows, such as Robin Hood or Marion, can have a maximum of six in their sheath. No, I could use arrows if I built built a bow, correct? Correct. That's correct. In fact, you can have a max of six arrows. You can even build arrows without having a bow. They just don't do you as much good. Is there any way of me giving other characters my resources that I build, or is it worth just letting the resources sit for them to build with? Um, resources are communal, so anyone can use anyone's resources, but if you build arrows, they have to either go to your character sheet or one of the armories. Makes sense. If I use my resources to buy, let's say, arrows, for example, can I then give those arrows to one of the other players? No. Um, now, resources are communal, so everyone has access to them all the time, but if you spend the resources to build arrows, they either have to go to your character sheet or one of the armories to assist the villagers. And you Fair can't enough. take them out of the armories, which yeah. is... We sad. steal from the rich, not the poor. Ah! <laughs> and I'm assuming it would take <laughs> me an action to build those arrows, etc. Yes. Correct. But, unlike other structures, where it's one action per structure, when it comes to arrows, as much wood as you spend to get arrows is still one action. Yeah, so if you've got, like, all of the wood in your... In your in the reserves here, you can blow all of it and just fill up every. Yeah, and fill arrows. both barracks and your character sheet. Quiver, just be like, what's up? It's like a D and D with a quiver of holding or the quiver of Alona. Just is it the same thing with throwing stones? Do they follow the same ammunition rules? No. It, throwing stones actually are fun because you just if we have stone in the village, when you elect to attack someone with a throwing stone, you just remove it from the village and make the attack. You go hobbit on them. Yeah. Fair just throw the actual rock. And I'm assuming it has the same standard, it does damage as everything else does? Yeah, it's range 2, 1 damage. As opposed to air bows, which are range 3. Oh, I see, so there's the difference. Yes. The range. Cool. Okay, so it's not as good actual economy, because I mean, you're getting two Wait, shots yeah. with one, but you're getting a one shot, but it's really, really useful if you're playing a heavy melee character and you just don't have enough movement or capability to take a monster. Uh, well, I keep calling them monsters. An enemy <laughs> out. Yeah, they are monsters. They're just on payroll. Oh, they're normal. <laughs> they're, they're just, just following, following orders. orders. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, so we've got. Where are we here? We've got some guys following uh, orders. Rob I've got actions. Left. Tile. He's got actions. That's right. Yeah. What happens? What are you doing? So, I placed on gold. Um, I could collect one of these other two resources. Uh, the wood is looking pretty safe right now, actually. I'm going to trust 
trust Maid Marion over there to protect that wood, but I am going to gather up this metal so no one else has yeah, to. That's a bit dangerous. And uh, actually, if I wanted to, I could spend one of those and get a sword in case I'm called without arrows later. Not a bad early investment. Mm -hmm. Or, actually, I'll hold on to it for now, because we've got archers on the board and someone might want a shield, so that's going to be all three of my actions. Okay. So it's my turn right now, but since I'm kind of uh, separated from those two tiles that I was hoping to explore, I can spend my destiny token to get more movement, correct? It could. Yes. Yep. So how would that work? When you spend your destiny, you will get four additional movement this turn, and movement can be interspersed with actions as well, however you wish. Yeah, destiny right. can be spent on movement or any any restricted action you have. Any action you can do. So that includes your special ability, which has a... or Some people have special abilities that can only be used once a turn. Yeah. Uh, others, other things you could be like, you can only place or remove one... Place and or remove one villager a turn, but with a destiny, you could place two villagers. Mm -hmm. right. I also see here it costs two gold to restore my destiny. Can yeah. I spend my destiny? Pay to restore it, then spend it again to get a bonus bonus. Absolutely, Absolutely. if we've got the resources to afford it. That's, a, that's an interesting... Yeah, you could actually, that's right, you now, can. every time you buy your destiny back, it is an action. Okay, that's so... one of your regular actions. So. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, um, with that ahead. said, if your third action was spent buying your destiny back, you could still then immediately use the destiny for your free action. Right. right. To run away or something like that. We've, we've done things like that before. So you yeah. run in, hit somebody, spend the gold, buy the destiny, run out. <laughs> hit and run. <laughs> yeah, hit Just run. gotta pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well then I'll spend this to get that bonus movement and explore the rest of the map. Cool. So one, two, three. Uh, if you touch me, Tom. Thank you very much. Oh. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> get the one that opens up. So... So that is, there's no... There are no restrictions on that tile whatsoever. No, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to keep the resources away from the spawn point, so this would be a proper way to place it? Well, you, think you could do it anyway. It depends on what resource you want to put at the back line. And we have a wood? Right, we have a wood. And the stone here. And this is metal, correct? Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so we actually don't have a ton of metal. We don't have any metal in the back line, so that's actually a good place to put that. Mm -hmm. I apologize, I have killed myself. Oh, I have hollow's falling off. It's okay. It's oh. a badly blue, blue miniature. It's, an old, it's one of my first miniatures. Well, at least he stands. While we're on it, it's worth noting that these are far from the biggest minis. <laughs> yeah. We're getting custom sculpts. Yeah, these are not the miniatures at all. This is uh, this is one of my first D and D miniatures. I painted this on like like thirteen or fourteen years ago. Wait a minute, twenty years ago. <laughs> I, say, uh, I, remember, I like, remember that. Yeah, this is like we. This was like I painted this one old as dirt, man. Yeah, you and I played D and D like twenty yeah. five years ago. So wow, you know how the years just keep going up as I'm saying this. Like went from thirteen to twenty to twenty five. Like sixty years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, 60, the fish was this was this big. <laughs> Gary guy guys created D&D. We were playing. No. no. So what happens is uh, we're just using these models here uh, as, as representative uh, placeholders for the actual sculpts. I believe by the time this video is up, we should have a sculpt up to show you as well uh, what James Van Shake is making. All of our models are going to be original. They're all going to be, their bases are going to be attached. So you won't have to worry about gluing bases on and stuff. But in this case, Ivanhoe just got over his, uh, he had too much uh, St. Germain and Hendrix Gin. So he's uh, he's back on his feet now. He's kind of stumbling, and you can keep going. You move it's hard to run in play. Okay, so that's my first. Yep. One. Three or two, three, four to explore the final tile. There we See go. what we get. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Interesting. So you can't place it like that because you oh, because my entrance right. right. So I can do this though. That's actually yeah, yeah. right. No, that's perfect because what you're doing there is you're actually uh, creating a bit of an island for, for people to go on, and that <coughs> that's all your movement. No, well, I used my destiny, so I have four more to use. So no, you we've win. already used four. So oh, three, three to get onto the top. Correct. Four, right. five, six. You actually have two movement left. Right. I like, guess I'll position myself right here for so defense purposes, or would you disagree with that? Is well, it worth going towards the enemy? Like, what's the range of that archer? Well, uh, the range of the archer is only two squares. But while we're talking about your remaining movement, Ivanhoe's ability is very useful for defending villagers. If you were to end your turn on the uh, space you just, on the tile you just flipped up, we'd have very safe access to all of those resource spaces. Mm -hmm. Well, sounds like a plan. Yeah, because... The enemies have to attack Ivanhoe first. Yes. All right. Even if there's a, a villager right here, they would have to find a way to get to you and attack you before attacking that villager. Well, then on that note, I will place a villager right there so I can defend it. Fantastic. That is stone correct. Yep. Yes. Go Ivanhoe. Now, would you guys say it's worth grabbing that wood or leaving it there to stack a little bit longer? It seems pretty safe. If you did leave the wood, what that would do is open us up to buy more arrows. Um, and then I could actually be more aggressive with my turn. All right, sounds like a plan. So are we now. All right. Well, um, not a lot of exploration to be done at this stage. No. So but we know that this wave is going to be added to, and they're all going to come washing mm -hmm. in at the right. end of this turn. But I'm sure that won't be a problem. <laughs> we can deal with it. Hopefully. Now, the archer will be able to fire through the hedges, correct? That's correct. Correct. So, is it 
advisable concern. She doesn't have any sort of long-distance weapon. Should she move out of the way? Well, you don't want to stay there because it's the, this is a no-dice uh, combat system. It's all auto-damage. Right. If you stay there and a lot of creatures, or creatures, monsters, a lot of the soldiers... <laughs> minions. <laughs> minions. A lot of good getting men and women stuck in a bad situation. <laughs> right. There we go. Wow, we're so Canadian. When, uh, <laughs> when, um, when if a whole pile of minions or uh, minions is safe, that's conservatives safe. Um, pile up here and make their way uh, this way, and they'll hit, they'll all hit you and deal auto damage too. Now you only have four wounds, and don't forget the uh, the other lose condition is is that two of the four characters if they perish, then you lose. So, right. So don't play fast and lose. Discretion <laughs> is the better part of that. Yeah. And there's no way to heal or bring people back from the dead. Once you're nope. done, you're done. That's it. Yeah. Now, your character is done. You still get your three actions every turn, which can be spent moving villagers around oh. and spending resources. Okay, so, so players are still part of the game. Th yeah, that's a great mechanic, so I don't have to just sit and wait while you guys finish the yeah, game when no, I die. No thumb twiddling <laughs> in this game. That's good to know. All right, um, I will move her back then a little bit, I think. So if you're going to do that, it's worth noting that that archer has three movement to play with. Okay. So oh. they don't move quite as fast as we do. They don't move quite as fast as we do, and they only have two range, which is less than our archers. But that is still a fairly sizable distance to step back if you really want to be safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like currently, if you were to move three movement there, you'd wind up on the wood camp right uh, on your tile there, yes. and be able to shoot diagonally to that next space because that's two spaces away with how right range here. is calculated. If he ends up here, one, two, three, and then he can shoot one, two. So we can shoot Marion, and if you're there, you. So you got one, two, three movement, four movement. You would technically be safe here. Yeah, assuming nothing. Unless a witch happens. lands on that tile. And witches in this game, they, they enhance all of the minions' abilities. So okay. archers shoot 0 to 2, um, and um, if a witch is on the tile, then they can go up to 3. And foot soldiers move 3 spaces, and if a witch is on the tile, they go 4. And okay. knights, and knights get an extra damage if they're on the tile. Extra extra damage. Damage. Oh. Yeah, that changes everything. Wow. So, <coughs> luckily, Don't fight knights, are, which is knights only move two spaces. Yeah, so. You can dance around knights fairly easy, but witches are definitely something that when they're on the board, you, you, you need to take care of them because the they enhance everything to a point where if you've got a half a dozen or more things on the board that are causing issues and suddenly a witch starts coming out and modifying, enhancing all that, then it just it can get spiral out of control very, very fast. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, go ahead and make well, your that said. Is it a wise idea to back up in that case, or move over? Now, can they only come in to the tile adjacent to their square? Is That's where they'll start. They're going to start here. They're going to start on the tile that right. in their lane, but then they can move based on their movement commands. Okay. So the only time they would ever uh, spawn or enter the board on a separate tile to where they spawned mm -hmm. is if that tile was fully blocked off, like a barricade or something. Like exactly. That. Like you'll notice that there's already two pieces of forest blocking mm -hmm. this tile. If we were to place a barricade here, this archer would actually move out of the way before it entered. Mm -hmm. So he would either enter the tile on this side here or tile over here. The decision would be toward the villagers, in which case, since this villager is closer and in movement, it would start over here. All right. Now, obviously, considering there's a limited amount of life, HP, that each character has, having a character go ahead and try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, say, one of the knights, or the foot soldiers, I should say, early on in the game would not be advisable. <coughs> we won't actually set things up to destroy them without costing an error. That's the ideal, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, you can use your wounds as, as part of the strategy because you do auto f strike back. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's it's uh, you can use the auto hit back to help remove monsters from the board if you've got the abundant, because it is a resource, your life. Right. So yeah, so yeah. Well, actually in this case, just do whatever you want to do because uh, if it's a faux pas, it's actually fun because it'll help describe okay. what happens in the game if you make a maneuver. Mm -hmm. Okay. And three turns down the road when the village is on fire. Good <laughs> like you! <laughs> Maybe. Now, in this particular case, though, if the archer was here, and I were to place my character here, would he be able to fire adjacent? No. No, enemies can't talk That about archer isn't going to worry about you so much as that foot soldier coming in. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, just for giggles, for the time being, I am going to place Rowena here. Um, I think that actually... Things appear to be reasonably safe for now. Okay. And so I will actually place a new one. We've got a wide variety of resources. Yeah, you got pretty much every resource from rare for us yeah. playing. Why don't you put it beside me? Because they have to attack me before they attack the right. villagers. Good call. I think the only thing we're missing is metal, and we're so the metal would be here. But is that there's the metal? metal right there? Metal right there too. Okay. I'll so guard that tile with my life. Metal and stone, my man. 
All right. <coughs> Maid Mary, I, I guess Thank there's you. no other actions for him to do, so Maid Mary. All right. Um, I'm going to play this a little bit aggressively because we have a ranged weapon. So I'll spend three movement to approach one of my arrows and you one of my actions. If I might make a suggestion. Because you are Mary, you could use your far shot ability to shoot from range four instead of three. Oh, I guess saving the extra movement would be worth yeah, right now. Yeah, you can move through that if you wanted mm-hmm. to as well. Most you went around it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stay here, and I am going to attack the enemy. Yep. So that uses one of my actions, one of my arrows, and my special ability. The enemy's taken out of play right away because it only has one health. And I can use my remaining movement to retreat back onto this tile. So, um, with the units, since there is a bit of a cap based on the models you have, if you kill a unit and return it to the pool, does that increase it, or is it only, for example, ten foot soldiers in the entirety of the game? No, it increases it. It goes yeah, back. It goes back up. It's all a right. constantly regenerating So, if you pool. really think you could handle it, you could let all of the monsters... So, oh my, you have me saying it now. <laughs> I have yes. respect for these people once. <laughs> you could have all the sheriff's men spawn out so that nothing else can spawn on future turns, but that means you're trying to hold that off without killing Hold the line. <laughs> At least they're not rangers. But anyway. So, so if you want, there is a pacifist way to do this? You'll just lose. We've never tried it ourselves, yeah. but if somebody pulls it off, I need to see a video. Yeah, that's fair. I totally, yeah. That's that's for you guys. So, 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 you guys so, so fix it or it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Achieve, <laughs> achievement, guys. I've got to figure it out. All right, so, <laughs> so. Since I've killed our first enemy, I'm going to have to take a token to represent my bounty increasing. Da, 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 da. Now, nothing's going to happen with that right now, but once I get my fourth bounty... Bad things are going to start happening. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Mostly, he's on the sheriff's radar now. So a pacifist build would prevent bounty. Yes. Yeah. So it's totally a legitimate, legitimate strategy. Okay. So you want to action was to shoot? Do you want to spend any more actions out? Yeah, I figure I should at least place a villager somewhere. Yep. Ivanhoe um, still has one more friend spot. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. The party's been started. Why so not just finish it? Go ahead and fill up Ivanhoe's tower. All right, Ivanhoe. He's having. I'm he's never having, moving. He's having a rave <laughs> on this tower right here. <laughs> and all of our villagers seem to be safe. Um, we don't have the resources to build any new structures, so I'm actually just going to waste my last action. Okay, right. so turn is done there, so we're going to go into our monster... Or Minions! Our ra- ranger spawn phase. Sh- our sheriff's men phase. That's right, sheriff's people. Uh, our assault there. phase. No, that's assault true. There are these. <laughs> With the enemy phase beginning again, we're going to have to roll our dice. He's yeah, got all the, the proper terms phase. right. He's, that's why yeah. he does the rule books. <laughs> so... Foot soldiers and archers, it looks like. That's correct. Wow. Again, it's the yeah. reverse of the previous turn. Ah, uh, so they're, they're doing a buddy system. So for quantities... Oh, no. oh. Archers are two? Yep, we're going to have two archers. Oh, oh. oh Rowena. Here you go. It's going to be bad times. There are your six archers. I can take them. So this is going to hurt a little, and what we're demonstrating <laughs> right now is the downside to very aggressive maneuvers early in the game. Yeah. Thank oh you, Jesse, for being our. Gosh, uh, this is pretty. Cool. I would say getting. getting well, big, but I, guess I am known for turn one. Great Let the moves. tower defense begin. All right, so we're gonna put the. Uh, oh, oh, we gotta move enemies. Oh, we do. That's right. It's not the first turn. And we don't have. Um, we don't have knights or witches to move, so we're going to go right to foot soldiers. That's and right. We're going to move um, from left to right, all the way through the lanes. Mm-hmm. Foot Duh. soldiers are going to move three sp- oh, uh, squares. Boom. And boom. And How do you decide moving. the direction? Oh, sorry, you just about to say. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah, so Go ahead. We're on the same wavelength. Yeah, Hopefully gotcha. that works out for the rest of the game. <laughs> so, um, every unit has a movement command. All of them except for archers, their movement command is raised, meaning that they're going to find the shortest path to your village to start burning it down. That's, that's what their orders are, plain and simple. The archers are going to find the shortest path to your nearest villager and try and shoot them. So moving along to the next foot soldier, there's no tile for him to move into, but he's going to explore one for us. Oh, what a trailblazer. Flipping the tile up. <laughs> that's a nice one. <coughs> that's that is. So we can place this however we want, um, except that we can't place it like this because it would cut off access to both those paths. Right. So I guess we're having the metal closer to us than instead of the wood. That's okay. We've got enough wood back here. Yeah. There's never enough wood. Got wood. With that tile placed, the foot soldier is going to enter on the shortest path to the village. So he'll enter here and move three spaces. And I'm glad that I'm not one space closer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of pain. All right, this guy here now, that barricade... Is blocking the foot soldier. Just and maybe it saved your life. Do you mind if I cut in? Because I had another question. Sure. Please. So let's pretend he was one space closer, and let's pretend there wasn't uh, a tree here, and yeah. there was another person. So he was adjacent to two characters yeah. somehow. Which character would he attack? Would he attack them both? Well, adjacent is actually in the plus 
formation. Yeah. So this is actually adjacent. Horizontal or vertical? Never die. That is no, that's what I meant. If there was, I'm just going to use these green blocks for the sake of argument. If there was a character here and a character here, who would you decide who that knight attacks? The knight's going to damage, deal the damage to both characters. Okay, they would both take it. Yeah. yeah, because the knight has extra health, they could, I could actually attack more than one person. What if there was three characters? Then, then we get to choose who takes right, damage. Right. So, so sometimes there's a benefit of having all of us kind of clump something so that right, way, so you we, can you know, if I've got more health than you do, for example, we could. It's because uh, no future reference. Absolutely. The one that we don't always get a choice on are archers because they favor villagers. Right. If a villager and a hero are in the same range, the archer will be like, oh, look, the easy target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, that guy's moved. Over here, the barricade is blocked. These guys from coming down that path. So they're going to follow the shortest path. Oh, this one here is going to come in, one step in, he's going to slice uh -oh. into Rowena oh. and deal a wound. Here you go, sir. Oh, no! Rowena will auto-strike back with a melee weapon and take a threat for it. All right. Okay. Even in self-defense, your bounty goes up. So you can't be a pacifist, it's just not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so now this guy's going to go, he's going to come in here and go one, two, three, and just turn there. No one to attack, nowhere to go, and now we're going to start over, over at the beginning here, and we're going to do all the archers. So the first archer is going to move in. One, two. Closest villager with that way, Kurt. Um, if we go by tiles, which is how you count this game, uh, the village is actually going to be closer. Technically, those are the closest villagers. Yeah. So it's going to go here. But because there's a knight in its path, it's going to attempt to move horizontally to avoid ending its space on the same path as the or same square as the knight. If there, are, you know, all these spaces were full, and there's no way that archer can go horizontal. The, horizontal, the, the, the archer will just go back to the closest tile and stop. Mm -hmm. The difference so. between the archer and the foot soldier is the archer will always stay at the back of the line if there's nowhere to go sideways or horizontally. The foot soldier will actually jump the line and go to the first open space at the front if there's yeah. nothing horizontal. Makes sense. Right? And knights will play castle. They just start swapping models around, yeah. which is hop tile to tile, the closest to the village and on the peril, uh, if there's a peril there. Favorite pearls, but we'll get to that if we uh, see one pop up. So those archers there are going to go because this archer here's got one, two, out of range to shoot Robin. Brave, brave Sir Robin. Wrong reference. <laughs> <laughs> he braved the chicken away. That's okay. It's kind of in the same reference. So these archers are going to go ahead and move in. And for this archer, because both horizontal spaces are full, as we were explaining, it's going to end its movement here. And both are out of range of Robin, so they're just kind of. Looking for him, they can't find him anywhere, and now we're going to go over here. In this case, this archer would have come down this lane. Upon reaching here, would have been enough range to shoot you and would have shot you. Because there's a barrier there, the archer's going to come this way and go horizontally here. Mm -hmm. Well, what we, so moving on to the next lane, these archers are going to step in. They're going to deal the damage. Mm -hmm. Now, if this, if this archer was attacking you from outside your range, you wouldn't be able to counterattack, but because it's adjacent to you, the archer's going to be killed. The only way you can counterattack is if you had an arranged weapon and arrows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can counterattack. Right. But she has no sword. Doesn't. Oh, she starts with oh, my apologies. Yeah. I didn't read that. There you go. That's her sort of. Everyone has a starting weapon that can right. be removed. Mm -hmm. I looked at the picture and assumed a bow. It's silly <laughs> me. So, this archer's going to do exactly the same thing now that that space is freed up. Collect that bounty. There's some bounty, there's some wounds. So uh, you yeah. You're dying. See, so now you're learning the benefit of staying away from the front line. <laughs> well, plus side, you have the most tokens out of anybody. That's right. So you're winning your own game. You play for games. <laughs> yeah, but... This archer's going to come in with one, two, three. It's going to be a three. short game. It's following the shortest path to the villager. Yeah, and it is out of range to shoot you, Rowena, so you're safe. And then these villagers are going to move in. Oh. And I guess I'm getting shot. I'm Mary gets shot. Do you want to spend an arrow to retaliate on that one? Uh, yeah, I might as well. So now Marion is out of arrows, and you have another bounty for it. There you go. And this archer gets perished. First wound. Don't like that. And when the next archer attacks me, oh, you know arrows, an arrow. arrow. She just. I take the wound. Just has to take the hit. Jeez. Yeah, not not tasty at all. So, that's the end of all their movement. Now the movement is finished. We will place. This the, is the part I like about the turn. Yeah. yeah. Free There's stuff. The, this is the part where we see we got some cool stuff happening here. Some wood and, oh, look, another coin. And, woof. Ah, flame of hope. second flame. We now have eight more turns to survive this mess. No, I know you don't have eight more life. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna have to look into that. Uh, um, so I noticed that now we've hit three wood with the one yep. villager. Yep. So that is the maximum that they can 
And yes. For, correct? If we keep leaving him there for turn after turn after turn, he's not going to do anything. He's going to sit there reading the paper. Might so, as well harvest it. <laughs> so that's that's the limit to him. That's as much as he can keep. That's right. Back. We can leave him there, and he's just not going to keep keep spawning. He's I do have space. a mite of bad news though. Since we're now entering the third round, so we get something extra. We get a bonus. Sweet. <coughs> yeah. So in the final game, these are going to be punchboard plaques. We're using cards for now for the prototype. Okay. We get our first Doom plaque. And yeah. That is full sprint. Knights can move three spaces instead of two. Ugh. From now on. From now for from the rest of the game. So these yeah. these Doom plaques are going. We only spawn them on round, going into round three, going into round six, and going into round nine. When they spawn, uh, they are permanent rules that modify the game. So now knights are, are no longer the slow unit that you can uh -oh. advance around. They move as fast as foot soldiers. Yeah. So above Remember when we beyond... said they could be kited? <coughs> you lied to me. <laughs> above, lied, yeah. above and beyond all of the the direction that you can actually place in creating the board, this will add an, an, another element That's right. that you've no control over. We have no yes. control over that. Yeah. We're just lucky no knights have spawned, because otherwise all knights would be... Well, they were waiting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they were stretching. Yeah, they, they, they were stretching their, their, stretching their, stretching their, their cast. They're all sitting back with their, I hope their, that their, their ankles off. They're, like, they're, the, like, they're ready to go. Like, Half lunch. The gun that doesn't exist right now just kind of goes like, off. The sheriff is holding his crossbow up. On your box. Exactly. And that's probably what Kill we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, so going into the third round, uh, that's what we get. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to play through uh, rounds four, five, and going into round six, we'll come back in and show you uh, what happens, and then we'll uh, continue the demonstration from there, just so that way you don't have to watch every round being played out. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs>